Welcome to the SolidCam University channel. This video's topic is working with parts that are askew. So there will be times where you get parts from a client or parts that you design yourself based off of uh, constraints or part of assembly or whatnot, where the part itself is not actually lined up with the coordinate system. As you can see here, I've got my, uh, my X and my Z coordinate system there from SolidWorks. My part is at different angles. There's nothing here that's a straight line or anything like that. And when you go into SolidCam, there's really not much here you can use other than the face to, to set up your corner system. You'll be trying to grab edges and whatnot, and that might not be appropriate either because maybe your stock is at a different uh, angle completely. So the way you can handle something like that is actually if you look at it from the SolidWorks side and create a couple of sketches essentially just one sketch. Uh, so let's go to sketch, and I'm just gonna sketch on this top face here. And again, you can see that that angle right there does not line up with any of the, of the edges of this part. So we are askew. So one way would be to go to inside the sketch, you go to your sketch parameter here for your rectangles and click on the three point corner rectangle. So you see here basically to create that, you're just choosing three points. So I'll just say one corner, second corner and the third corner makes the rectangle. <clears throat> so I've made it oversized simply because, again, I'm going to take advantage of what SolidWorks does, and that is uh, associativity or mates or constraints, however you want to refer to it. So I have that sketch geometry there. Essentially, it's just those four lines. And I'm going to go to click on, let's say, this line right here. And we'll see the relations there. So relations, constraints, however you want to refer to it, that line, I'd like to make that line tangent to this edge. So I'll hold my control key, click on that edge there, and you'll see between those two entities right there, the only thing we can add is a tangent relationship. So I do that there, and it shifts everything over. Because again, the relationships in that rectangle are already perpendicular and parallel. I've just made sure that it remains tangent to that edge. And I'm just going to keep going along with tangencies. So I'll just say, click on that edge right there, click on that curve right there, and again, add a tangent. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm almost making the outside edge of stock. So again, if your part is askew, creating the box definition inside SolidCam could also be a challenge <clears throat> because you're going to have to make that corner system to get that stock to work, and it might be askew. You might be getting an oversized part. So one way to get an actual minimum amount of material box around your part right off the bat is to create this sketch. So let's say we just continue with these, these associates right here. So we'll just click on that guy right there, say that's tangent. This one's on the wrong side, so I can actually just grab either the line or the point and just drag it you'll see that it maintains all the relationships. So everything's remaining tangent. I'm just moving the line around. Okay. So what I can do next is just grab this line here. Those two entities together will make them tangent. And then the last one here, you'll know that uh, you are pretty much fully constrained by these black lines. The lines have gone from blue to black, meaning that they're fully constrained. The only one that's left is this right here. And that's because I haven't constrained where it can go in this direction. So I'll just click on those two entities and clear that up. So that right there can only exist as it's tangent to those points there. So I could use this sketch in my solid cam as, a, um, as just lines to set up my coordinate system. I could choose this point here as my origin, and I could choose this, uh, this line right here as my x-axis. Um, let's take a, actually take a look at that. So I'll click on the exit sketch, save my part, and let's just open this up real quick as a solid cam part. Okay, so we'll go to coordinate system. In this case, I want to orient my z-axis to that face, so I'll just click on select face, and that orients the z-axis, but we can see that the part started off askew. That x-axis is parallel to the x-axis of the SOLIDWORKS coordinate system, and it's giving us a part that might be oversized. So I'm going to use my sketch to pick a minimum amount of material box, or probably the intended stock. So I'm just going to go to pick origin. Let's say I pick that guy right there, 
And it still just shifted the origin over there, but I want to use this line to dictate where my x-axis is going to go. So I'm just going to go over to pick x direction, pick that line there. My x is now parallel to that line there. Because those two lines were parallel, the y-axis is now parallel to that, and we should be good to go. So I can just click the green check mark. And we'll get back to the main screen. We'll go stock. And that coordinate system is correct so that when I go to box definition, it creates the box definition in that coordinate system. So now I have a proper stock definition. But I can go even further with the work that I've done inside SolidCam or inside SolidWorks. So without a stock definition, let me just jump out of here. That sketch allows me to actually create some stock. So we'll go back into the feature manager in the design model. That sketch right there, I'll just highlight it. We'll go to features and we can extrude it. And if we say, let's say an extrude all in the other direction, that could be used as my stock definition. I can probably make this a blind definition and make it any size I want. And that is based off of that sketch. So with that sketch in place, I could do the exact same thing I did before. I could put a box definition or what I can do is use it as a 3D model definition. So what you want to do here, before we move this, leave this screen, is I've created this solid as a representation of my stock. But if I don't uncheck this box, it will just merge, add itself to the overall model. And that kind of eliminates the fact that I have that nice looking boomerang looking part there. But if I uncheck this box, it actually adds it to SolidWorks as a, as a separate solid. You can see that there which means that when I go to the solid bodies folder, I can right click on the one that I created and let's make it transparent. So I have two solids in this one SolidWorks file. Okay, so we'll exit out of the part. Let's just save that change that I made. We'll go back, go back to solid cam. We'll go back into stock. From the sketch that I created, I made a solid. And now with that solid, I can go to 3D model, select on that solid that I created, and I'll have my stock definition. Okay. So that was using just the, the constraints to get the minimum amount of material. But if I go back to the original part, let's just go back to the original part here. Here's the original part. If I go to my sketch, I'll edit the sketch, and let's take off that last tangent. We'll take that one off, and we'll take that one off. Okay, so what I've done is by taking off those two tangencies, nothing is tangent to that circle there. So this square that represents our stock can go in any direction as long as it stay, keeps the part inside there, as long as we stay tangent to those edges. So the reason I want to show that is because what if we had a constraint like a dimension? Let's say this stock was to remain. Let me just make sure I grab both edges correctly. Okay. So let's say we wanted that part to be, let's say 5.5 inches wide. So as soon as I add a dimension, that becomes another constraint. So now this thing can only be 5.5 wide. Still staying tangent there. It's not constrained. Exit out of the dimensions. It's not constrained in this direction, but it is constrained in the way that I can't move it without violating those tangencies there. So now I pretty much have just the length to play with. Okay. And how that plays overall is, once again, if I go back and let's just delete all, let's go back over here. If we delete all three of these. So we're back to the original sketch. This thing is actually now just floating in space relative to the part. If you had a part and you had a certain size of stock you wanted to machine that part in, well, 
this is how you can do a best fit scenario. So I'll just take a dimension from here to here. Let's just say we'll make that six inches. And from here to here, let's just make that 13. So now we have a definite size of stock. So like before, if I move that thing around, now it moves the whole square because it always has to maintain that those uh, those dimensions. So I can kind of do a best fit like so, just kind of eyeball it, or I can add some more constraints. Like say, for instance, if I wanted to make sure that we remain, we remain tangent to that face, as soon as I add another tangency, we have this ability here to kind of rotate it around the part. The more constraints we add, the more we can actually place this thing in space. And of course, that sketch is associative to the SolidWorks, to the SolidCAM program, so my stock will follow that. So basically, if your part is askew, you're not constrained with the, with the angles of that part. You can actually create your own sketch to align your own stock, to align your own coordinate system. Any questions on this or anything else from SolidCAM, you can always call us at 1-866-975-1115, extension 2. Uh, you can always send us your parts or your questions via the ticket system at solidcamsupport.com or stay tuned for the rest of the videos on this YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.